Hi everyone. In the previous video of string matching algorithm, we have covered ribbon card, neg algorithms as well as KMP algorithm. Now today we'll see finite automata string matching algorithm. This is very different from what we have covered so far because in all the algorithm which we have covered, we used to compare the elements, compare the elements of pattern with the text. Whereas here, what we are going to do is we are going to make a automata. We are using the term automata here. That is why here we are going to make a automata for a pattern and we'll give a text as an input to that automata. And if that autom uh, that if that text as given as input to automata reaches to a final state, then we says that that pattern is there in the text. So it's far different from what we have studied so far. So let's start with the, the concept of finite of automata string matching. So before going to that algorithm, let's uh, see what is a basically an automata. So we study so many things in theory of computation about the automatas that is DFA, NFA, epsilon, NFA. And we see PDF, many things we see grammar, context free grammar, and so on. We are not going to uh, that depth. Just uh, taking an introduction that we define automata with five tuples actually. If we say what is automata, or we define by five tuples. So those definition changes, tuples definition changes. Somewhere in, in further of theory of computation, we have seven tuples like that. So for a finite automata, we have five tuples that are denoted by Q, sigma, Q naught delta and a where we says this q is nothing but set of states set of states this sigma is nothing but your language or you can say your inputs language or the inputs q naught is nothing but your the initial state from where you are starting initial state and it is always represented by a arrow pointing towards a circle and then you have a delta that is called as transition function, which is very important. In uh, uh, different kinds of automata, like we have DFA, deterministic finite automata, we have NFA, non-deterministic finite automata, or epsilon NFA. So this delta definition changes basically. So transition function. So if I talk about uh, DFA, so the transition function there is delta is what? It is nothing but Q cross sigma will give you Q means from a state taking any input you will reach to another state right whereas if you talk about NFA that's not important but for the basics I'm telling you it is Q taking Sigma you can reach to 2 power Q that is non-deterministic finite automata and so on right and the last Sigma is A that is your accepting state and this accepting state is represented by a double circle right so these are the important thing this is five tuples so any automata is defined by these five tuples now let's come to the concept of the algorithm that is finite automata string that's very important part of uh, the lecture so what happens basically we will be given a text and will be given a pattern right so we have to construct we have to construct a automata for the pattern that's our main aim of the algorithm construct the automata for pattern right so for constructing an automata we need a transition table transition table is nothing but a description of automata right it is nothing but a description of automata so let's see how to construct a transition table construction of transition table it's very easy for example, I have to construct a transition table for a pattern B A D A. Let's say, right? B A D A. So what I'll do? What I'll do? First, I'll make a rough automata like this, which is taking A. Oh, sorry, B A D only. That is B A. D A which is taking this. So this is initial, let's say 0, 
one, two, three, and four seed. So I have constructed an automata which is accepting B A D A. That's the first step. Second step, we'll draw a construction table. That is sorry, transition table. That is, what are the symbols A, B, and D used, right? And what are the states? Zero, one, two, three, and four, right? In transition table also, uh, sometimes we show by this and star, but that's okay. So now, let's fill the table. Now, can you see A on zero state? You are going to state one by taking input as B. So on zero, taking input B, you are reaching to one, right? Okay. From one, taking input A, you are reaching to two. From one taking input a you are reaching to 2 right now from 2 you are taking input d and reaching to 3 from 2 taking input d you are reaching to 3 from 3 you are taking input a and you are reaching to 4 so this is the first step of the transition filling right so what you have done whatever the rough automata you have constructed for a pattern you just have filled the transit table according to that now now we'll start with the zero state at zero state if you take a and d because first element is b so if you take uh, any element a and d you have nothing to start with so it will remain zero and zero for the zero element right so i make like this a comma d because it's a starting state now reaching b you have b right on reaching 1 you have b right on reaching 1 you have b right now on reaching b you have b now what tables you have to fill you have to fill for b and d so you need b and you need d so if you says b b and if you take b d what is the prefix table If you say what is the prefix value, pi value, for this what is the pi value? If you take this, what is the pi value? This is one, right? Because this is equals to this. For this, what is the pi value? Zero, right? Now, so you will fill one and zero because nothing is matching, right? now when you come to the second table i write this here you are you reaching here so you already have b and a so you have b and a and what table you have to fill you have to fill for a and you have to fill for b so if you take b a b and you take b a d so can you tell in the value of prefix so b matches with p b a doesn't matches with a b so one value B doesn't matches with D. B A doesn't matches with A D zero. So for A it is one and for B it is zero. I hope you are getting it. Now in the next here for the third one you have B A and D, B A and D, and you want for B and D, right? So let's draw it. B A B D. Sorry, B will take another term. B A b a d b and b a d d right so what's the value here zero what's the value here b a d d again oh, sorry here it will be one this is matching with this and this is doesn't matching with d d and nothing will match zero so it will be one and zero right any issues now here in the last trial that is let me take it with this so you reached where you reached 4 so what you have b a d a here so b a d a and you have to fill what all values for a for b and for d so you have to fill for a you have to fill for b you have to fill for d so if you take b a d a a 
B A D A B B A D A D. Can you tell me the prefix value? So B doesn't matches with A. B A doesn't matches with A A. B A D doesn't matches with D A. B A D A doesn't matches with D A A. Those who don't know the concept of prefix table can check the previous videos. We have seen the prefix, how to calculate prefix values. Now here B matches with B, yes. B A doesn't matches with A B. B A D doesn't matches with D A B. So only one I guess, right? And here B doesn't matches with zero, so we don't need to check it because prefix is not matching with suffix, therefore do not check. So if you have any confusion regarding prefix, you can check the previous videos of prefix table. So 0, 1, 0, right? So this is the complete transition function, which we, transition table, sorry, which we have constructed. This was the main aim of the algorithm. So if you have to make a automata for this, you can make it. That is, from 1, taking input you are getting B from 1 you will on 1 B and from 1 if you take D you will go to this state right what does the automata says uh, I'll just represent with this green color on 2 you are going on 1 taking on 2 you are going to 1 on taking input A you are going to 0 on taking input B, on taking B, and you are going to 3, right? And from 3, you are going to 4, taking input 1, and going to 1 by taking input B, and uh, you are going to 0 for taking input uh, D. Am I correct? Yes. So again for 4, you are reaching to the 0 that is on A, on B you are reaching to 1 and yeah, correct. So this is your finite automata. Now, whatever the pattern is, uh, whatever the text is given to you, we have drawn this for a pattern, right? So if this is a pattern given to us, now, if whatever the text is, for example, A, B, C, A, B, A, B, A, D, A, C. If this is a pattern, or this, sorry, this is a text. If we put this as input to this automata and we get the final state or we reach to a final, final state, that means that pattern B, A, D, A exists in the text, okay? So this is the concept of finite automata with string matching. We'll solve example in the next video and we'll see the concept of algorithm. Thank you.